Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here. I want to answer the question, what is a Protestant? You know, what are they protesting? Well, Protestantism came really from Martin Luther. Now, there had always been like Wycliffeites, Lollers, there had been all types of people, Waldenses, Albingenses, that had kind of bucked against the institutional church. Now, you have to remember, technology was a lot less back in the Middle Ages and the Dark Ages and all that than now. So you could have groups of pure Christians just all over the place, the Vados and these type of people, that in the Piedmont and all kinds of people, uh, Martyr's Mirror by Jacob von Brock that goes into all these people. Um, uh, but as the Catholic Church kind of expanded, as monasteries began to expand, as seminaries began to expand, and uh, bishoprics began to expand, and this type of thing, they began to crack down through the time of the Inquisition, which Inquisition was started by Pope Innocent, I think the third, around 1229, somewhere in that neighborhood, A.D. I'm trying to do that from memory, but somewhere in the 1220s A.D., if I'm, my memory serves me correctly, the Inquisition started and started killing masses of people that would not be Catholic. Now, some people say, no, the Inquisition only killed 4,000 people. It was the secular powers. Well, that's kind of a, a shell game semantics. The Catholic Church would hold the tribunal, hold the Inquisition, and then turn them over to the secular, secular powers for many times the auto de fa, which was the burning there on, at the stake, with all this kind of stuff. But really, probably into the tens of millions, because they'd go wipe out whole towns and say, the Lord knows who's his. So we just sent the true believers, the Catholics, to heaven by killing this whole town and uh, wiped out the heretics. Just like you have to cut infection out of a body, we have to cut infection out of you know, the spiritual body, Christ's body, which they would think the Catholic Church is. So, but then you had a monk by the name of Martin Luther who had been to Rome, seen the corruption. He had actually walked up the steps on his knees and all this kind of stuff. And he was reading the Bible. He's like, this stuff cannot be true Christianity. And he's in the book of Romans. The just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by faith. And he's like, all of these uh, things to where simony, the buying of positions within the Catholic Church, the if you give money to mass that you will get people out of purgatory. He's like, none of this is in the Bible. This is not pure religion. So on October 31st, 1531, he just went and nailed 95 theses that look very mild to today's things. And many people would nail things on that church door in Wittenberg. He wasn't unique in this. And another church doors. It was like for group discussion. And so by 1520, 1521, he is the hunted heretic. I think Roland Bankton may have made a famous book by that name. It may not have been talking about Martin Luther, but he was the hunted heretic, you know, and it had revolutionized many of the German princes. And so for their own, they didn't want to be under the Catholic Church. So many of them for their own things, he's at, he's at a, on a trial and he says, you know, here I stand. I can do no other. God help me. It's neither wise nor prudent for somebody to go against their conscience. And so one of the German princes comes, rescues him. And then because of his great knowledge of Hebrew and Greek, he does the September New Testament translates the Bible in 10 months into German, and it spreads like wildfire throughout the German countryside. And so finally, there was a diet of spear or spire where they talked about the Protestants, 1528, 1529, and uh, that gradually became their name. They were protesting against the excesses of the Catholic Church. And so they're a branch off the Catholic Church. And many times you'll hear about the Catholic Church and her pups. That's what he's talking about, that denominationalism actually is a branch off the Catholic Church. And so Protestantism would just take sola scriptura, sola fide, uh, sola Jesus, you know, Jesus alone, Christ alone, faith alone, uh, scripture alone, excuse me, I said that one wrong. Um, and so this is what a Protestant is. To this day, it is people who do not look to the Pope, who do not think the Pope has any authority. Basically, many times it's priesthood of the believers. Um, 
it's state churches like the Lutheran Church in Germany is a state church, the Norwegian Church, Swedish Church, and uh, these type of things. But they would have somewhat freedom of conscience, and uh, many Protestant churches have kind of become very, very liberal. And the Catholic Church, you know, one of the claims the Catholic Church makes is they never change, even though they do, like on evolution and these type of things. And I know they can go back to Augustine and all this and through Aristotle. But they do. And but this is what Protestantism is. Now, the Baptist would say they're not Protestants. They would say there's always been Baptist from the time of the apostles till now. Now, Pentecostals come out of the Protestant root system in their modern iteration, but Pentecostals would be more what's known as restorationist as well. So would the Christian church. So would the Church of Christ. These would be restorationist bodies, as would the Church of Latter-day Saints, Mormonism. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. So, but Protestants are basically most denominational churches, whether it's Lutheranism, whether it's Presbyterianism under Calvin, uh, whether it's Methodism, because Wesley came off the off branch of the Anglicans, which Anglicans would debate whether they're really Protestants or not, but they are. Um, but they would probably still debate that. So that is what a Protestant is. It is a Christian who has the same root system as the Catholic Church, but does not claim the authority authority or the rituals of the Catholic Church. So I hope this helps. Why don't you just be a biblical Christian the way Jesus wants? That's what God wants, a good apostolic Christian. God bless you. I love you in Jesus' name.